Last time Sisu got hauled out for the second time in one year, I fixed a ripped stack pack and Tipex's Yamaha engine got a service. This time we dodge firefighting planes, we get rid of the whole Sahara Desert on Sisu and we went to explore Gran Canaria. This is Captain Frick and his first mate Pietro. We decided to chuck everything, leave the rat race and just embark on a new adventure. That is our new home, Sisu. Join us on our epic journey as we sail the oceans, discovering new horizons, new cultures, new tastes, new flavors, new everything. It's just such a vast, vast world to explore out there. So please join us in our quest. Captain is doing a makeshift thing there to stop our electrical wires from chafing through there in the front. Uh, our downward camera's wire is gone. Yep, another thing that you do on bridge. Fix stuff. Hopefully, our sheet lines will now behave. Well, they did behave, they will not change other electrical wires anymore. First, my, my! Yay! Look at that! Oops! <laughs> gotcha! Well done! Now we are in Las Palmas, in Gran Canaria, and we we here because our life raft is here. That one that accidentally got deployed. So we, but it's now already a few weeks, and the people is not responding. So we now here to go and find out what happened to the life raft. Um, I just keep on saying they're waiting for quotations from Viking. It might be true, it might not be true, but we cannot stay here any longer, so we need to get our stuff back. Okay, some of you can remember a while ago our life raft saga when it accidentally deployed, and you've been asking what was the procedure, what, how did they fix, or whatever. So basically, what we did is just to check everything was still inside the life raft and we had to roll it up and parcel it off with a courier company to um, Viking in Gran Canaria. 
So it landed up looking like this with a gas cylinder. So all that had to be packed back into the white container, which they did for us after checking that all the content was still in place, like the fresh water and life and emergency kits, etc. At a cost of a thousand seven hundred euros. So let us see what's happening there in Las Palmas. Apparently, oh, there's a big fire. Oh yeah. Apparently. When we came in, we had to. We have been escorted by the marina police with boats and flashing lights and all of that, because there's two hydroplanes that's doing the circuits. And I all come in, scoop up the water, go, firefight, and then come back again, scoop up again. So they're just doing their turns. And it's like quite fast. So you, um, in a round. So they need to you need to go quickly across their landing strip or their scoop up strip. And then there was a big ferry as well to interfere with all the works. Yeah, because the ferry was timing also when the planes was finished with their, their scoop up run. They needed to run quickly or get out of there and we had to go quickly and so we almost bump into each other. Very was busy entry. Very busy. Very, very, very busy. There's those sea planes coming in. There's one and there's a second one. Can you now see me? Near foot. It's always a lovely view when you come out in the morning, have a nice cup of coffee, sitting in the front cockpit and watch the scenery unfold in front of you. But something that we just come to accept here in the Canaries, it's either the desert islands or it is the Sahara Desert, um, the sand or the dust from the Sahara Desert. But look at the haziness here. In the beginning you would think, well, we, we still hope, <laughs> it is humidity. But you don't see this humidity really that clearly, or any humidity that clearly. So this can only be one thing. And we washed Sisu three days ago. And it rained yesterday. Oh. We washed it four days ago and it rained on the third day after the wash. Check this out. So the dust is for us a very big concern here in the Canaries. If you're only here for a couple of days or maybe even weeks for waiting for the hurricane season to go past and then go down to the Caribbean I think it's okay the, I mean this marina is very cheap um, we figure it's around less than twenty dollars a day so it's very 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 cheap the other marinas is up to fifty 
euros a day, which is a little bit more expensive. But if you stay longer than three months, then you get 40% discount, which is good. The wind is normally coming from that or that direction, so um, it's a north to northeaster, and it might be that it picks up the dust from there, but I, I don't see that really. This looks like the Armatan from the West Africa region. So this is feeling like I'm washing the half of the Sahara off the boat. Just check this out. boat stuff that we haven't had time to explore and enjoy Grand Canaria so tonight is our first night out in the town and we found ourselves initially in downtown Vegueta. but now we find ourselves in the old town which is super amazing so and it's scary to get here <laughs> it's, it's super scary yeah. to get here decision made we text there, there was to little know. children to say it's not that scary but if i was in south africa it would yeah. be scary yeah. and then the children just remind me it's not that scary but we'll definitely care back or we'll taxi back or we will not walk back it's it's almost five kilometers it's a long way yeah, in the it, dark it, it, no, you will not drive back, drink and drive, uh, that thing, so I think I we will. should taxi back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go, look at this awesome view. searching and searching and searching and, and this towns look at this behind us it's one street after the other just looking like this and look even that side it looks the same it's just like so awesome but to find an open kitchen that we actually understand yeah and there's just trying. so many to pick from <laughs> We can even have beautiful sights here in a marina. Look at that. A busy piece of ocean.
It's a very hot and humid morning that we depart here from Las Palmas, Gran Canaria. And yeah, we should start planning our routes, I think. But it's a next good weather window. It's only in seven days. So we can either stay another seven days here in Gran Canaria or we can just start tacking and we will arrive there anyway before seven days. So I think it's by selecting a good weather window and also the time it will take us. For now, the only negative will be is that we're going to go straight into the wind again. Story of our life. Uh, we will do that for another couple of, <laughs> I would say another six weeks, I think, um, from here on. So, yeah, let's get into it. Let's start beating into the wind. Eventually, one day, we will start doing the normal mill route where everyone just goes downwind. But not today. Next time we visit awesome Madeira. They've got loads and loads of these quaint little restaurants that you never seem to get enough of. And apparently they are host to the largest firework display on All Year's Eve in the world. As you can see, that is truly a rowing motion happening here. And there's the captain. We ran out of petrol with the dinghy. I've been procrastinating to put petrol in after the last week. And we ran out. There is the pizza bit of fish over there. We didn't run out of fuel, it's just me exercising, doing my rowing exercise. 